Land is one of our most vital resources. We build our homes, roads, parks, and industry on it. It is habitat for thousands of species and is a critical part of our ecosystem. And of course, we need land for agriculture. But how much land is actually available for us to sustainably grow the food we need? The vast majority of the Earth's surface, about 75%, is water. This means that approximately 25% of the Earth's surface is land. Only a small portion of the land, about 8% of the Earth's surface, is used for agriculture to grow the food we eat. The majority of agricultural land, about 6% of the Earth's surface, is used for livestock grazing or to grow crops used to feed livestock. Only about 2% of the Earth's surface is used to grow food crops for humans to eat. Technology, innovation, and best management practices help us use only a fraction of the Earth's surface to feed a growing population. Land that is considered marginal is not in a suitable climate or conditions for crop growth. Land in rocky terrain, colder climates, and high elevations may not grow food crops, but it can grow grass and forage that livestock can convert to food that humans can use. If we're going to feed the world, we need to consider different ways to use the Earth's land to grow more food. For example, do we convert more land to farmland for agriculture, or do we use the land we currently have, but increase productivity to increase crop yields? We have the power to influence how much land is used for things like agriculture, urban development, industry development, oil and gas, mining and forestry. The choices we make with the land can bring both social and economic benefits, ensuring sustainable development. But achieving a sustainable balance requires a great deal of thought. For example, if you want to increase your agricultural land, what are you willing to give up? Natural habitats, industries, homes, recreation? You could convert natural habitats, but there will be consequences. For example, the Amazon is home to thousands of different and unique living things. And because of this, it plays an important role in helping regulate the Earth's atmosphere and ecosystem. Therefore, before you decide what you're going to change, it is important to understand how one choice about land use will impact another. To feed the world sustainably, we will need to increase food production on the same amount or on even less land than is currently available. It is estimated that a hectare of productive land, roughly the size of two soccer fields, is lost every eight seconds. Growing more food on the land that is already available to us is only possible through the use of best management practices. Let's take a look at how farmers are using best management practices to help ensure that they can grow food sustainably. Precise application of crop nutrients, making sure crops are watered at the best time of day, planting shelter belts or hedge trees, replenishing soil nutrients used by the plants during growth. Sometimes best management practices are more costly, but when they are used, they can have a positive impact on our environments, our crop yields, our economic growth, and our society. This helps us move towards our goal, and it's not just best practices on farmland that needs to be implemented. Urban best management practices are also important. Expanding cities upwards rather than outwards allows for more homes on less land. Retaining wetlands within communities helps filter nutrients and runoff. In developed countries like Canada and the US, food is thrown out and overconsumed. In developing countries like Kenya, Food is lost to unreliable storage and transportation. You may not think it, but hunger is often caused by food waste and inequality, and not scarcity. Land is the source of life, but it is limited. It cannot be replaced or constructed. We need to reduce food waste and grow more food on existing land using best management practices so that we can sustainably maximize the land's full potential.